Hey guys, this is Coop with GarageGymReviews.com and today I'm going to show you how to make your own DIY climbing pegboard. Memory is a dynamic system. It's a repetition of rhythms. Just real quick before I get into the actual build, if you click on the screen, you're gonna to go to my website, garagegymreviews.com. Here you can download the DIY pegboard ebook that I came up with. It goes through everything that I used for this as well as the different steps I used. So you could use it in conjunction with this video. Before you do anything, we're gonna to need to gather our supplies. First, you'll need one eight inch wide by two inch thick board. I made mine about three feet long one four foot long two by four, some scrap plywood to go against the back of the pegboard, one 14 inch long one and one fourth inch thick dowel rod, a handful of one inch wood screws, a handful of three inch wood screws, and some wood glue. And then here's an overview of the tools I used. First, I took the actual board I'm gonna be using for the pegboard and decided to cut it in half. As you're gonna see, I use mostly power tools. However, you can feel free to use hand tools or whatever tools you want. If you wanna use scissors and not the board as long as you want, that's fine. Uh, I just use power tools because they're easier and I happen to have them on hand. But I cut the board to about three feet just because I didn't want it to be very long. I've got shorter ceilings. If you're in a garage gym, that's probably gonna be the same for you. However, if you're in a commercial gym, I mean, you can make the board as long as you want. I then took the board to my Rogue R3 Power Rack workbench and decided to map out the holes. For this pegboard, I decided to do two rows of holes. For other pegboards I've done, I usually do three rows, but two rows are just easier and you don't really end up using the middle row anyways. To mark them off, I drew two vertical lines down the pegboard. Both are two inches from the edge of the pegboard and then I drew little dots six inches apart down each line, that's where the actual holes are gonna be drilled out. This way, you have some distance between each hole, but it's not so far that you can't reach up to it. The next part is to actually drill the holes. This actually takes time, but before you drill the holes, I suggest you wear protection. This is undoubtedly the most lengthy part of the process. Take your time when doing this. I opted to use my drill press just because I have it. It's easier, it's quicker, and you can keep the drill vertical. The problem with using a hand drill is you can often go side to side, and when that happens, it's difficult to get the peg in the hole. That being said, I've made many pegboards in the past using a hand drill. It's not a big deal. Just make sure that when you're doing it, you're trying to keep the drill vertical. This is gonna produce a lot of sawdust. As you can see, I have my vacuum connected there. That helped produce the sawdust. But I'm telling you, this creates an insane amount of sawdust. So I'd suggest probably doing this outside. Otherwise, your garage is just gonna be filled with sawdust. Once the holes are drilled to your liking, take the plywood piece that you're gonna use for the back, put the pegboard on top, and then trace it out. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna cut it out. I used a jigsaw. You can use a hand saw for this as well. A jigsaw was just quicker for me. When you're through with that, take your handy dandy bottle of glue and then glue and screw the plywood piece onto the back of the pegboard. I was trying to get this done pretty quickly so I didn't roll the glue out evenly. That's something I'd probably suggest. You're then gonna screw the plywood into the back of the pegboard. This is gonna keep the pegs from going all the way through and you getting your hand pinched, things like that. Finally, you're gonna take the stretchers and these are gonna be what connects to the studs in your wall and you're going to screw these into the back of the board and then screw the board onto the studs. I'd highly suggest you get a stud finder to find exactly where the studs are and screw it directly into the middle of them. Otherwise you could have trouble because you are putting your entire body weight on this and you're jerking against it and doing pull-ups and it takes a lot of abuse. The very last thing you're going to do is measure out and cut your dowels that you're going to use for your handles. I measured out 7 inches because that was about 2 inches for the pegboard and then 5 inches left for my hand. That was about right for me. You can do whatever works best for you, but that's what I would suggest. Once the pegboard is done, all that's left is to turn the music up to 11 and use it.
As you can see, the pegboard is one of the easiest and simple DIY projects you can do for your gym. I highly suggest you make one, build that upper body, build that back, and have a good time doing it. This has been Coop with GarageGymReviews.com. We'll see you next time.